So this is our kitchen garden, which we built last spring. So this will only be our second year using this space. Um, it's been really heaven sent because of the deer that we deal with to have a space where they can't destroy anything that I grow. Um, so if you want to come on in, we have my favorite feature of the kitchen garden are these arches, which I built last year, um, all out of recycled or, or forage material, just out of some tea posts and the rolls of um, cattle paneling and willow and other flexible branches that I forged from my parents' property and tied those, tied those in. And I can't tell you how many birds that we have that perch here. We have hummingbirds right now feeding up um, in my hummingbird feeder. And we have about five of them who frequent this space. And I will see them from my kitchen window there to my right. And it's such a pleasure for me to watch them and know that they are loving this space. Um, also growing up over the arch is another Betty Corning clematis, which again, one of my most favorite clematis and the hummingbirds love her. She's got that trumpet shape, which the hummingbirds love. Over to my right, I have a couple of tomatoes that are growing on these beautiful cedar tours that my dad built for me this, uh, this spring. He built me two more at the end of the garden as well. And behind the tomatoes, I have some special sunflowers, which I just seeded a little bit late, but they are sprouting and I will share those with you later on. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. We'll do it. We'll splice in a shot of in the back corner. I have a black raspberry growing and some strawberries. Over to my left, I have another strawberry bed, which is um, a mix of Ozark and, and Proven Winners, Buried Treasure varieties. And I kind of just wanted to see which ones um, I liked the flavor of and which ones were performed the best. I also have some just leftover oregano going to seed from last year and some thyme and a teepee of sweet peas. And I can't tell you how much the sweet peas have hated this heat that we've had. The blooms aren't even lasting a day and um, the stems are incredibly short. So this has de definitely been the hardest year for me with sweet peas and I just hope that our temperatures start to cool off and maybe they will rebound. Um, don't look too closely at the bed down below. That had lettuce um, and I ripped it all out because it was infested with earwigs. Um, and I'm gonna be seeding some pumpkins that hopefully will do something for me this year in that space instead. So over here I have my dahlia bed and it is covered with diatomaceous earth. Um, we'll see how this works. I bought uh, a duster and used the Bonai diatomaceous earth and came out here this morning. Um, and diatomaceous earth only kills anthropods, um, so things like ants and um, the earwigs, uh, because my husband and I were walking through her last night and in every single, I can see them right now, center of the dahlias are earwigs burrowing and we just um, want to try to moderate their population. I have a bed here that has gone over a beautiful sweet rocket. It's going to seed now. Um, I love this as a cut flower so I'm going to leave this here and let it grow and in the corner I have a couple of extra zinnias that I popped in and then a boysenberry um, which I just planted this spring which is a cross between a blackberry and a raspberry. This is a very special bed. This is my Dawn Creek Zinnia bed. These were seeds I purchased as a part of a fundraiser for her Zinnia breeding program. And again, we've had an issue with earwigs here, but if you wanna take a look at um, these blooms, they're very special zinnias. I'm so excited to see all the beauties we get this year. I can't even tell you. Um, in this last uh, raised bed, I have four blueberries underplanted with some creme brulee phlox, which I started from seed, and a couple of Sahara rubecchia popped in 
for good measure. These pansies um, were supposed to be in some spring pots earlier this season and I had brought them home and left them by my driveway and the deer ate them down to nubs and they looked terrible so I just plopped them in here and I haven't had the heart to rip them all out because they just keep performing and they recovered and they look so nice but um, I think I will be pulling those out soon. And then over on the other two tours that were built by my dad, I have three, which is probably overkill. I probably only needed two thornless blackberries. And I think the variety is black satin. Um, this little building is um, my daughter's flower shop, which my dad built for them for my older daughter, Penelope's birthday. And um, they come out here and cut flowers and, and play and it's such a sweet little a little shop for them. And then in this back corner, I have growing along the fence, uh, a climbing rose called Eden. And I will pop a photo of her when she was in bloom about a week ago up on the screen. She was just glorious. And in this barrel in the back, I have a raspberry fun from Monrovia, which is can be red raspberry, a honeysuckle sensation, and then I tried to pop in some phlox in the bottom of the pot, but again, mixed, mixed results. But that is the kitchen garden space, so now let's head down to the new terrace. So now let's head down to our new space that we just have put in this spring. Um, this is our, our extension of our backyard since we live on a hillside in order to utilize a backyard we had to dig down and create a terrace actually to make this ground level we had to bring in 150 tons of fill and this actually is on top of our septic drain field so it created a lot of challenges for us to be doing the grading after the fact um, but we we worked it out so that's that's all that matters uh, we put in these stone steps which i just love so the plans for this area will be to have mostly a um, large oval lawn and then i'm in the process of planting a spartan juniper hedge because of the fact that we live on a hilltop we are very exposed both with privacy and in terms of the weather and the elements. So I wanted to create a space that feels like a room, that feels more enclosed, it feels more private, and we desperately need privacy from um, our neighbors down below us. So I will be extending the juniper hedge. The reason why I chose juniper is because it's drought tolerant. It will put up with wind. It will put up uh, the deer uh, don't love juniper so I think unless things get really dire deer pretty much leave juniper alone um, these will get about 15 feet tall and they will get three to five feet wide so at their largest the goal is to have them just touch and then I may even underplant them with a boxwood hedge down below um, over in this back corner we have vision to have some type of pergola or portico that we build um, with a view looking out that is framed this way. So as a part of when the process of when I was designing and building our home and also as I'm designing and, and working the land, as my husband likes to say, uh, keeping in these views in mind, keeping these frames and these images in mind, um, for, for the future. So the plan is to have some sort of either gazebo or portico uh, where we can have an outdoor dining area for our family and have the view be framed this way. In the future, I think it is entirely possible that we add even more terraces down the hillside. That'll just be kind of ever evolving as we work the land. Um, so our terraces um, were built with um, local granite. 
I would have, have, have loved to have, like in Europe, the stack stone, um, dry stacked walls with smaller, you know, chip stone, um, but that's just not readily available to us. It would have been incredibly expensive to, to bring that in from far away. So we kind of have to just utilize the rock that we have in our area. And so my plans to soften all of this kind of imposing stone is to plant up all the crevices of the wall with creeping thyme and all these um, spreading rockery plants that will soften all these edges. Um, I've started planting this area, but when I started planting, we got hit with those 100 plus Fahrenheit degree days, 111 degrees it got up to. So everything I planted in this area has only been hand watered and even though I was hand watering two or three times a day, all the new plant, newly planted perennials have definitely suffered. So don't look too closely at, at any of them. I just this evening put in a temporary drip system which we have to get up and running because we need a new timer. Um, it's temporary because our irrigation isn't done down here. This conduit we have will be the conduit where our irrigation guys uh, stub out the drip. But for right now, I have it coming off of a frost-free hose bib down the hill. Um, up the stone steps, I'm going to be planting some more lavender. And I would love to have an arch over the stairs with some climbing roses going over the arch. So that is our kitchen garden and the rest of our back garden and our new uh, terraced backyard and what we've got going on right now. There is so much more that we are going to do. There's so much in process and I hope you join us in the future. See you next time.